got about two pounds here. I think I'm going to make a uh, utensil holder for the uh, kitchen cabinet. These are very popular. I sped that up. It's a lot easier to center um, clay on a wheel that's going fast than on a wheel that's going slow. Um, so if you're having trouble centering, if you're a beginner and you're having trouble, speed your wheel up. See if that doesn't help you a little bit. Cone up your clay a few times. This just helps to get it nice and wedged. And see, I see an air bubble right there. And this, this coning up just kind of helps you get rid of those little air bubbles. And because those things will give you trouble when you're trying to pull the wall. I found that a utensil holder needs to be straight up and down, not narrowed at the bottom like a vase. The reason is, uh, especially with these new silicone utensils that they're, they have out today, it's very difficult to jam a utensil down into the pot when it's sticking to all the other ones and you can't find room down in the middle and they don't want to move over and all that. So um, if it's straight up and down, it works a lot better. Just a word to the wise. So I'm going to open this and I'm going to leave about a three eighths of an inch uh, floor on it. It's very important to compress the bottom. Sometimes it's nice to put that little swirl in the bottom, uh, but it isn't necessary. Probably nobody's going to see it anyway. Maybe they'll see it when they first buy it, but that's nice. That, that says, this is handmade. But you want to compress the bottom so you don't have a crack in there right across that nice little swirl. Okay, let's see. Let's check that thickness again. Perfect. Okay. So now we're going to paint. So we've got the, it's centered, it's open, it's spread. Not completely, but we're going to concentrate on the walls now. So I'm pushing in harder with my right hand than I am, whoops, with my left hand. And I like to throw with slip on my hands. It keeps you from getting your clay too wet. 
and uh, works beautifully. It's very slippery. So right now I'm just going to try to even up the thickness of this um, clay that's bunched up over here ready to become the wall. So I want that to be nice in the bottom. Every once in a while I recompress the bottom because as you put your hand down here, uh, sometimes you just dig a little ridge in the on the edge over here and you want to get rid of that. So I'm going to do a knuckle pull right here. I'm letting off the pressure as I get closer to the top because I, I don't want to pinch the rim real thin. I want to leave some clay there so that I'll have something to work with. Go back in and straighten out the bottom if you have any little boo-boos in there. I'm gonna keep that nice because eventually this will get so tall it'll be hard to harder to do anything at all to the bottom. Okay. Let's get the inside and the outside nice and wet. And here we go again. Doesn't matter if you're not tall enough, or you're, if it's not as tall as you want it to be yet, you still must let go of the uh, pressure once you get close to the top. So I've still got quite a bit of clay down here on the inside and the outside. So I'm going to try to move some of that clay up into the wall. Press your rim once you get to the top, collar it in. Well, the wind is really blowing today. Okay, so you've got it nice and straight. It's a little flared here. We'll fix that in a minute. But basically, this is it, save for decoration or whatever you're going to do to it. Um, get the water out of the center. Make sure that that's nice and smooth. There we go. We've got all the slip off the... So let's use our, our little leather. Now you don't want the rim to be real wimpy because you're using this to jam utensils down into and you you want it to be pretty strong. All right. 
Let's slow that down to pick that up. Okay. You can put just a bit of a turn on the very rim. Okay, and my favorite foot rim, or foot two, yeah, foot rib, excuse me, foot rib. Um, I love this foot rib. I like the way it, it uh, does a foot, and it makes it so easy, especially when you're not going to trim the bottom of it. So the bottom of this is going to be flat, save for this little... Uh, decorative foot rim. Okay, so now, oh, I think we should add some kind of decoration to this, don't you? So let's prepare the canvas. In a manner of speaking and so let's take let's take a chopstick those are easy to come by so let's put a little rim down there I'm gonna reinforce the rib up here See if I can do this without pushing it in too far. So I have my finger just behind that, and I was just pushing the clay in on both sides of the uh, clay. All right, so to do this, let's see. What should we use for this? Let's use one of these just a skinny popsicle or popsicle type stick but it, I've kind of worn it down on the end here so okay there's that kind of looks like a landscape now resist the temptation to get rid of all those little uh, ridges that you've caused to stick up because you don't want to do that yet. Hmm. So I'm keeping all of the design inside or between these two bands. That'd be a good point. Yeah. 
when this gets leather hard, then you can chip off all the little crumbs, so to speak, and um, get rid and clean up those lines. If you want to, there's nothing that says you have to. Uh, I would run a sponge over it at the very least because, uh, you know, as clay gets fired, if you have anything sticking out like that, it gets sharp. And you don't want your mom or whoever you're going to make this for uh, to have cuts on their hands. Alright, so let's slow that down, take a look. So th this looks great with glaze on it.